What we want to talk about now is common repair mistakes. Now this list that we're going to go through is a list that was compiled by the Mobile Air Conditioning Society through surveys, through reviews of shops and practices, things that our technicians are doing. So these are things that you want to think about. We already went through the best recommended practices, how you should prep. And what I find these days is it's the steps before, those 14 steps before, checking the belts, checking the other items, right, that you discover the problem. It may not be the refrigerant charge. All right, first one, not identifying system refrigerant. We covered that. Use a refrigerant identifier to make sure you have the correct refrigerant in the vehicle. Also, adding to that, check for sealants, right? So in the same step, check for sealant first, then hook up your refrigerant at identifier, and then check the refrigerant to make sure you have the proper type of refrigerant in the system. Not using the correct OEM specified AC system lubricants. Check to make sure that you have the proper viscosity and the right type of oil. Improperly charging. We've already gone through the process of talking about what happens if you put too much refrigerant, what happens if you put too little refrigerant in the system. Make sure you accurately charge it. A J2788 machine is going to help you do that. Not using the correct refrigerants. Now, there's a lot of different blends out there, but when you look at the manufacturer recommendations, they're normally going to recommend HFC 134A or whatever their specific standard is, that's what you want to use. Not replacing components, particularly condensers or ones that match the OEM performance. Now, I'm not saying that aftermarket parts won't work in a vehicle. Just make sure that when you're comparing what you're replacing, that it's what it should be. Also keep in mind that when you have damaged system components, you might have debris throughout the system. You know, you didn't create the problem, but if you have a compressor that comes apart and it is sent debris throughout the entire system, you're going to have an issue with that. Now what we note here is components, particularly condensers with ones with match the OEM performance. Now I'm not saying that aftermarket parts don't work. What I'm saying is you need to match up the components that you're dealing with. The other thing I'm going to point out is doing a halfway repair doesn't make sense. If you have a customer where the compressors come apart and it's sent debris throughout the system and you decide because of the expense not to replace all the components, that can create a problem. Let me show you something that might help you understand what you're dealing with today. Let's take a look at a condenser from before and a condenser for today and take a look at the passages that the refrigerant and the oil needs to flow through. Let's take a look. This right here is a component, the condenser. You can see in the older one had much larger orifices than the one. The little strip that I have right here, so as you can see from this picture right here, the holes in the newer condensers are much smaller than the holes in the older condensers. That's where you're facing. Any debris, any sealant is going to easily clog up these holes right here. You might not have seen it with this condenser, but you are definitely going to see problems with this condenser. Don't shortcut the repair. So the bottom line here is make sure you put the right components in the car and don't shortchange what you're doing. If it needs the components, tell the customer they need them and let them make that decision. If you don't replace all the components you should, you know that's coming back. Who's going to reflect on you, not the customer, not the parts? Make sure you do it right the first time. So next, what's on our list? Well, air in the refrigerant. Now, that happens a lot with older air conditioning equipment where you don't check for excessive air in your internal tank. And the way you do that is with a gauge, and then you check ambient temperature, and you compare that to the amount of pressure that should be in there. And if it's excessive, you have to bleed that off. Now, this problem goes away if you have a J2788 machine. That would solve that problem. But if you want to do a quick check on your own, use your old machine, charge the system, then hook up your refrigerant identifier and recheck. If you see that you have excessive air in there after charging it up, you know that your machine is introducing air into the system. Let's continue. Number seven, not properly and regularly maintaining your machine and your pumps. Very, very common issue. As I teach around the country, I ask, how many of you guys change your filters regularly? 
How many of you change the oil in your vacuum pump regularly? About less than half the hands go up on a regular basis. So the big deal is making sure that you maintain your equipment. A vacuum pump is a critical part. If that vacuum pump is no longer pulling down into that deeper vacuum that you need to, you're not getting the repair that you should. Number eight, flushing with chemicals and not completing the repair correctly. When you flush with chemicals, you need to make sure that you ensure that that chemical dispersant has been eliminated after flushing. There are liquid refrigerant flushing systems out there. You can also use nitrogen. Always make sure that you follow the manufacturer's recommendations when you flush and clean out debris. The next thing up, not verifying the efficiency of repairs. After you're done, make sure you put it through the performance testing. What did you see before? What did you see after? In this program, we tried to demonstrate that for you, showing you we took a baseline to start with, documented that, and then we moved to the next step, which was, did we correct the problem? Are my pressures correct? Do they match the manufacturer's recommendations? And then you need to make sure that the customer knows what the next steps are. In air conditioning, you need to make sure. If they need to come back in a month, have them come back in a month. If you want to check for leaks in the system, make sure that they know that you want them to come back and contact them to ensure that you take care of the system. Step number 10, performing repairs with little or no or lack of updated service information. I find a lot of technicians today jump right at the problem. I mean, it's just air conditioning, right? We've been doing this for 20 years. Is there anything that I really need to know? The benefit is looking for technical surface bulletins, looking at issues that have problems that might create the issue that you have at hand. Review the information, see if anything has changed from year one year to the other. One example is if you have a, an evaporator core that builds up moisture and it gets the moldy odor in the car. You might continue cleaning that out or doing servicings on it. If you check the service information, it might tell you that there was a feature in the scan tool to keep the blower motor running when you shut the air conditioning off to dry out the evaporator case. You might be missing that option as far as you have available to you in the scan tool. The last one, you have this program, so you are doing self-learning, self-training. A lot of technicians, are not getting the training they need. So keep the training going. That's where you're gonna learn what the new tricks and tips are out there. Purchase additional programs so you can keep your learning going. But a lot of technicians out there do not attend any training sessions at all throughout the year. So they're not keeping up with the changes that are in the technology and new recommended repair techniques. So congratulations to you. Keep the training going. Keep your skill set building. That'll help you make more money and be more efficient.